If you want to live longer, you need to brush your teeth longer. Find out what it's all about, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the E. Craig Wall Senior College of Business Administration here on the campus of Coastal Carolina University. We're focused on the American Dental Association's Oral Longevity Campaign. And we're visiting with one of its longtime volunteers, Dr. Baxter Sapp Jr. Good morning, Dr. Sapp. I'm glad to be with you. What a treat to get you in. And of course, a big birthday celebration yesterday. Yep. Congratulations. Was, thank you very much. Absolutely. This is a, a three-week trip down to Myrtle Beach. Obviously, the thrill of you being in town last week for the big conference. Well, we had a great meeting last week. And uh, exploring the longevities of uh, the dental practice. Of the dental practice. Right? Absolutely. You know, to think about this, the North Carolina Dental Society, mm -hmm. year after year, coming down to Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. It's been a great location, the Kingston Plantation. Fantastic. It's been great. We have really enjoyed every bit. And, of course, the families come. Oh, yeah. Because they enjoy the ambience of the, of the beach, and it makes it a very good place for learning. And speaking of family, last week in town with you was uh, another doctor, Dr. Macon Sapp. Share with us a little about doc the other Dr. Sapp. Of course, when folks come to y'all's office now, they don't know, well, how do they make a difference between the two of y'all? Well, it's Dr. Macon and Dr. Baxter. <laughs> you know, that's the way we distinguish it. And uh, Macon is a graduate of 19, uh, 1990 right. School of Dentistry at Chapel Hill. Right. And he and I have been in practice now all together that entire time and built a new office in that period three years ago. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to our... Our, his sister, my daughter, coming in as a hygienist in a couple of years. Is that right? Yeah. Miranda. Miranda, right. How exciting. So wonderful. A, a family operation. Are there many father-son or father-daughter operations uh, throughout North Carolina or throughout the country? Well, I don't know. There, there are probably a lot, but when it gets to the numbers, I can't right. say, you know, you run into somebody and they'll tell you, I practice with my son or right. I practice with my daughter. And as it is now, there are more women in the profession than there were years ago. I can remember when I was in dental school, we had no women in our class. No. As a matter of fact, I can't remember a woman that was in the entire school of dentistry at Temple University in Philadelphia. Is that and right? today, apparently one half of the school is women. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. well, good for them. They yeah. need to be moving forward. As you know, of course, my grandmother who attended law school at the uh, same university you're, that you went undergrad mm -hmm. and where Macon went for, uh, for, for dental school, obviously was there in 1920 when she was the only woman in the class. Mm -hmm. You think about that, those impacts obviously for uh, women really making a stand as, as far back as that to now, obviously at Temple or the University of North Carolina to really be making an impact. It's different nowadays. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How exciting to get Marinda in the practice. Real quick about yourself, Dr. Saff. Are you originally from North Carolina? I, I was born in Durham, reared in Raleigh, and uh, just uh, I, I, the, the, when I went in the service, the further I got away from North Carolina, the more I wanted to come back. Listen to you. And uh, so when I got out of the service, I joined the staff at Duke University Medical Center right. and stayed there for about 17 years. Wow. And uh, it, was, it was a very, very good experience to be in one of the leading health care centers oh, yeah. in the country. And uh, I guess this is what has fostered my interest in this program of oral longevity, oh, the relationship definitely. between dental health and general health. And overall It's health. a reality and has been for years. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it's been laid out. It's not just coming from mm -hmm. Dr. Baxter Sapp. It's coming in for many years of research right. and year after mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. What actually got you interested in dentistry at an early age? Is it something uh, from a very early age? Or was it just in the college area? Well, I had a, my first cousin was more like my brother, was a physician, right. but I hated the hours he had to keep. And my grandfather was a dentist and I thought, well, you know, that's something that I would enjoy because I enjoy working with my hands. Right. And I thought this would be something that uh, 
would be something I could enjoy. Right. And as it is right now, I'm in practice for now 57 years. Oh, come on. Yep. 57? 57 My years Lord. of wow. continuous practice. That is tremendous. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of a kind in the Carolinas, if not in the southeast, or in the country. I mean, there's uh, obviously dentists. I'm sure there's some that have practiced mm -hmm. longer, but probably not much. Not many. That's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank That's you. That's tremendous. Uh -huh. And of course, we sure hope to get you back next week as well to highlight more about the Oral Longevity Project because there's so much to it. What actually caused the kicking off of the project? Well, I, I got into this in an unusual way yeah. because I had, when this DVD that was produced by the ADA, the ADA Foundation, the GlaxoSmithKline was mailed to all the dentists in the country. I was so impressed with this 45 minute uh, instruction of, of the relationship between dental, dental disease and general health. I called the ADA and I thanked them for it. And I didn't realize this, but they published my comments in the ADA news, which I did not see in the ADA news until somebody called me one day and asked me to uh, come and talk with them about the project. And I said, what project? Oh, come on. And so as a result, I went and talked to them about the project after I'd done some study on it. And I realized that this was started by a very prominent man in the field of education, Dr. Arthur Dagoni. Dr. Dagoni was a long-term uh, dean of the University of the Pacific one of the outstanding dental schools in the nation. He also served as uh, the president of the American Dental Association, and he is currently now serving as the director of the ADA Foundation. And I could see his signature on this program, and I think he probably is the one who was the, it was his brainchild, and, uh, but there were many others oh, yeah. who worked to make this a reality. And of course, a lot of this comes sure. in this supplement. Let me hold that up and, so uh, viewers can see this mm -hmm. special supplement mm -hmm. that came out in September mm -hmm. of 07. Right. Um, and of course, the Consumer Health Care Division of GlaxoSmithKline and the ADA and the ADA Foundation working hard. And GlaxoSmithKline's been working for years mm -hmm. on the making sure to, that folks help recognize that, that significant connection between uh, oral health and uh, or dental health and overall health. Well, the interesting thing about this is that uh, GlaxoSmithKline is a Durham firm. Right. Yes, has a very and, strong uh, presence. And the past the chairman, uh, Charles Sanders, is a neighbor down the street. Is that so right? It's awfully nice to have this so close to home. Absolutely. And he's very interested in all of this. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and he yeah. is a physician by training. That sure mm -hmm. helps, mm -hmm. very definitely. Mm -hmm. well, when you see that, and, and uh, when we talk a little bit about the history there, it, it is something, as we said, not just coming out of your mouth, but something that's been researched for, for years in the past. I know you brought a book from Dr. Barkley, which highlights a lot about the uh, causal connection between uh, dental health and overall health. But what is the, uh, w when you think about it and just talk about it in, in, over, in normal terms, how does that come about? Why is there a significant connection between my dental health and my overall health? Well, I, I think perhaps what we, we see is that we have an increase in the aging population. For instance, uh, in today's world, one out of uh, eight individuals oh. over 65 years of age. Oh, yeah. And 20 years from now, one out of five is going to be right. 65. That. And uh, so we got all these people who are 65 years of age, like 35 million. Right. Who were back in two, 2007. Right. And in 2030, we expect there to 71. be 71 million people. That. And of course, the 85 year olds right. are uh, back in 2002 was. Uh, 4.1 million, and we expect that to be 7 million. I was amazed yeah. to see even the mm -hmm. figures uh, that mm -hmm. you had in, in a little preparation you provided. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. again from the Hallmark Company, mm -hmm. just one company. Oh, yeah. That uh, they share with viewers <laughs> how many cards were sold. Uh, there were 83,000 right. uh, 100 year old birthday cards 
sold last year. Unbelievable. And that's just one company. Right, mm -hmm. right. And right. of course, you know that a lot of people who uh, bought a card for a hundred year old person, but the thing about it, they're hundred year old people. More of them are available now in, in our society. Mm -hmm. And as the years go by, with the good health care that is developed in this country, and right. that there are going to be a lot more people. I was, am that I was amazed, and of course, for you, having practiced for 57 years, the first, I guess, 17 of, of that 57 after uh, the service there in the Air Force, 17 of those years at Duke, and then since 71, I think you said continuous in uh, in family yeah. practice there. That's but right. for you, you've probably seen even lots of. Uh, families that go on. What about for yourself, some, some history there of, without talking particulars about patients, have you seen some patients really progress and maintain well, good uh, oral I, health? I always think back to an experience when I was a sophomore at Carolina oh, yeah. in uh, undergraduate school. And I was on the highway one Friday hitchhiking back to, to Raleigh and uh, I got a ride to Durham and this nice lady picked me up outside of Durham and I got in the car, and we began to chat, and, uh, and I asked her where she was from. She said, Raleigh, and she was going there. be glad to take me close to where I lived. And that was wonderful. And I said, what were you doing in Durham? She says, I was visiting a periodontist, one of which, one of the few periodontists that were in Durham at that time. Right, right. And so on the way, time, we began to, to talk to each other and began to realize that her husband and my father were very good friends, and oh. I had known them for years. Just from hitchhike. I mean, Just from hitchhike. Really random, yeah. And it was the nicest experience. And when we got to Five Points in Raleigh, and uh, I opened the door to get out, and she turned and she said, uh, "If you ever become a dentist, I'm gonna become one of your patients." And guess what? I saw four generations of that family. No, four generations. Four generations. Of the same family. Same family. Isn't that incredible? Just tr and of course, that was well before you'd attended dental school at Temple, when you were a sophomore. Well, see, I was a college. sophomore in college, yeah. yeah. And they waited to, until I got out of dental school, and they were some of my first patients. That is fascinating. That is fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, another a very interesting story. I hope you don't mind sharing it with viewers. Last week, when I saw you and your son, when you were in town from mm -hmm. the North Carolina Dental Society's meeting up there at Kingston Plantation, I'd asked your son, well, now, you, of course, I know your father's a dentist, and you shared with me that your great-grandfather was a dentist. How about your grandfather, Macon, your, your father, Baxter? And he had, um, he had said, no, my grandfather was, a, was an inventor. Yeah. Well, he was right. My father was a welding contractor, but he was a very, very creative man. He, uh, he liked anything he wanted, he built. And uh, he did a lot of interesting things I observed during my lifetime. And uh, he had this obsession that the roads in North Carolina should have a line down the middle so that everybody would know which side he was supposed to be on. 